Every year in the NFL, it's a new team. As far as goals go, we have one. Putting a f***ing ring on our finger. Welcome to the Buccaneers Observer Podcast. This is Ralph Phillips. I'm Molly Bay. Today is the last day of March, March 31st, 2022. Tomorrow is April Fool's Day. Maybe we'll find out this was all a joke. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Ralph, uh, you're going to have to change that intro. I know. I was thinking about that. What do y'all think, guys? You think we should uh, change the intro? I like it. I like. I love it. it. Yeah. I don't know. Can we get uh, Todd Bowles with yeah. a witty little soundbite like that? Here's, here's Todd Bowles. He'd be like, yeah, I'm just chill. That's what he said at the press conference today. <laughs> I'm just chill. I'm just chill. Arians is the cool one. I'm the chill one. And then he said Tom Brady's chill too. So he, uh, Bowles is going to have to come up with something new. Something else. Something else. Uh, something. Well, we're getting ahead of ourselves talking about press conferences and stuff. We have a good podcast for you today. Lots of interesting things to cover. And, of course, we're going to talk about the elephant in the room. Ah, oh, man. Where do you want to start? Is it? Is it? Is it just the Buccaneers that are this stressful, or is it just football in general? Yeah, I just think it's been a crazy offseason. Yeah, listen to this. Okay, here we go. This is a free agency so far. I'm going to start off with this, and you're going to go, wow, I forgot about that at the beginning of the free agency. Calvin Ridley was suspended for gambling. That started uh, it off. Yeah, okay. Uh, the, Tom Brady retires. Aaron Rodgers agrees to an extension with the Packers. Broncos traded for Russell Wilson, Bobby Wagner. I love saying it. Bobby Wagner released by the Seahawks. The Commies got Carson Wentz from the Colts. Oh, that guy. Okay. The Chargers got Khalil Mack from the Bears. <laughs> what? Oh, I forgot about that one. I know. You're just like, what? That right there, just that alone would have been a bombshell offseason. We're, we're, we're not even like a third of the way through all the stuff that's happened here. Uh, the Browns got Amari Cooper from the Cowboys. Mm. That was a big one. Then Tom Brady comes out of retirement. Bam! Look at the Hiroshima bomb. <laughs> Mitch Trubisky signs with the Steelers. Once again, showing the Steelers don't know how to do anything, but somehow they just keep winning. They get the weirdest people in there and then just win. I had no idea he was with the Steelers. I missed that one. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's uh, right now. He's gonna be their starter, which you're just like, what? Well, I don't. He's in Rudolph. I, I might would want Mitch Trubisky over Rudolph. Yeah. Uh, Julio June Jones was released by the Titans and is still unsigned out there. Mm. That's a strange one. Von Miller leaves the Rams and goes to the Bills. We're still. We're. we're like, I'm like halfway through this. Baker Mayfield requests a trade from the Browns. Devontae Adams traded from the Packers to the Raiders. I mean, these are huge, huge names. Uh, Deshaun Watson traded to the Browns for a stack of smog gold. (laughs) Matt Ryan leaves the Atlanta Falcons and goes Mm -hmm. to the Colts. Mm -hmm. Tyreek Hill. Goes from the Chiefs to the Dolphins. Very small sum of money. And then yesterday, we find out, shock the whole world, especially Buccaneers community and the NFL world at large, Bruce Arians is stepping down as the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, this is the same thing that happened when Tom Brady unretired. I was sitting on the couch, just happened to pick up my phone, no, no, no. We were watching YouTube on TV. All of us sitting there, and uh, somebody had posted a video. It said Bruce Arians retires. It was the title of it. I was like, "What?" And I thought it was a joke at first. And then I was like, "Let me check." And scrolled through, and sure enough, and I was like, "Oh man." We were watching in the current. That's right. And That's right. so it's an hour long. Neither one of us had looked at our phones in an hour. It must have happened like right as we were watching. In I th- the current, right as we turn it on. I, I think I, I think we were f- about 15 minutes, a half hour late with it, I think. So it's right in the middle of In the Current, which was, I found something very interesting about that In the Current. If you haven't watched it, it's a very weird one because it's 
kind of like a redo of last year's in the current. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is like a prologue, but they're still doing the same. I don't know. No, well, last year they did in the current. They're in the off season for the year before, right? Yeah, that's remember. what they're doing this time. Okay, so that's what they're doing here. The okay. off season year before. But one of the things before we get into the top, all the stuff with Bruce Arians, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. Arians. <laughs> all right, Mike, say Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there has been this rift, uh, pr- proposed alleged rift between Tom Brady and Bruce Arians. Uh, Tom Brady was saying he didn't like the fact that Bruce Arians would get uh, left witches and Tom Brady's game plan and then mark it with a bunch of red pins and put notes on it and stuff like that. Wait, Tom Brady didn't say that. It's alleged right. that that's the issue. Right, right, right. Well, during the in the current episode, there's a moment where Tom Brady's walking by Bruce Arians who's sitting in his golf cart and Bruce Arians yells that out to him. He said, I really liked y'all's game plan for today or for this week. I, those weren't the exact words. But the, the what you definitely got from that was that him and Leftwich had designed game plans and Bruce Arians had gone over it. And I was just like, what? Okay. So that just adds a little bit of fuel to the fire, I guess you could say. Anyhow, so Bruce Arians retires as the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but he's making, I don't even know if he would call it a lateral movement. He's going to the front office as special assistant of football operator, something like that. Senior football consultant. Senior football consultant. Now, Bruce Arians and Todd Bowles and all of them had a press conference today, and Bruce Arians came out and said exactly what we said. He has no idea what that means. It's just a made-up <laughs> title, basically, for him to just walk around the front office. He he was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. He's like, I don't know what this is. He says, but, you know, at least I get to stay in the building. Uh, and he, he did say, I'll just do whatever's needed. Mm-hmm. And it was basically what that position title means. So, anyhow, Bruce Arians has retired as the head football coach. He's now going to be the senior football operations guy. And Todd Bowles, our defensive coordinator, has been promoted as head coach of the 2022 NFL season. But he did sign a five-year contract with the Buccaneers. A head coach contract. Yes, head coach contract. Uh, Terms of that have not been disclosed yet. All we know is it's five years. And nobody knew about this, except for a handful of people. Jason Light, the Glazers. Tom Brady. Well, Tom Brady knew about it. When he came back, he yes. announced his. I think. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Rick Stroud said he learned about Bruce's retirement on either the day that he decided to unretire or the day after. Okay. So Bra- Tom Brady was there at the press conference. He did not speak, though. Actually, there was quite a few players there in the room. Yeah. They were saying Hainsey. Um, I think Barrett was there. Oh, really? Cam Bray at Ryan Griffin. Ryan Griffin, because he just signed today. Mm-hmm. We've re-signed Brian Griffin, the <laughs> professional Number backup. Number three. The, this, is, this is his ninth year? Wait a I minute. I think eighth. No, he's been with us eight, I'm pretty sure. Let me look at this. He's been in the league since 2013. Okay. Now, uh he first signed with the Saints in 2013, two seasons with them, both on the practice squad. He, this will be he, – he's been in the league for nine years. Yeah, so this will be his eighth season with the team. Uh, seven previous years he's been with the team. He's thrown a total of four NFL passes in a game. Wow. And only completed two of them for 18 yards. And that was in 2019 when we were playing against the Colts, week 14. Uh, Timmons Winston got hurt. And at halftime, he came out, and Ryan Griffin threw four passes. Uh, and then James Winston came in after that for the first offensive series in the third quarter. And then the next week, playing against the uh, Detroit Lions, he did four kneel downs at the end of the game. Oh, so he <laughs> so, lost yardage then. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it. So, but he's earned a total of seven point three million dollars, not including what he's signing for now. 
not bad. Not bad. Million a year to be right. a practice th- squad, dude. Yeah, I think he's getting another million or something this yeah. year. Same thing. Anyhow, so back to Bruce Arians. Mm-hmm. Molly, what are your thoughts on all this? What, what do you what do you got? Gosh, going on over there? the way that you just worded everything made me feel like maybe there is a conspiracy. <laughs> I don't know. That's a great thing about conspiracies. I'll say this. You know, the term conspiracy theory has been thrown around a lot the past few years as like a negative thing. We all believe in conspiracy theories. Every single one of us. It's one of my favorite things to do is when you encounter people that, you know, they'll be like, conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. I'm like, dude, you believe in a conspiracy theory. They'll be like, no, I don't. So I start naming them. Mm-hmm. And I swear to God, I don't think I've gotten through more than five before somebody goes, oh, oh, yeah, no, that's, that's, that was, you know, 9-11 was definitely an inside job. Or, <laughs> oh, JFK, oh, yeah. CIA. That's mine, JFK. Right, yeah, everybody's yeah. got one. Yeah. Everybody does. You're like, mm, that At whole least thing one. doesn't make sense. Yeah. When weird things happen, you know, we're pattern seekers. Humans are, are we're extremely big into pattern seekers. So when we, something happens unexpectedly, we all of a sudden, you know, just start looking for patterns mm-hmm. in our 2020 hindsight. So, yeah, you could make anything out of anything. Yeah. It's very easy to do. Especially when you're not privy to all the information. Right. Like getting a, yes. a sliver. Yes. The facts. All right. So so go ahead. Go ahead with what you so, were saying. So um I don't I don't know. I don't know what to think. And you know, it does make sense that BA felt like we were in a good position, the best position he was ever gonna be in to step away. I mean, we're we've got the GOAT at quarterback and he's you know, handling a lot of the offense in conjunction with Byron Leftwich. So they've kind of got that aspect covered. And, you know, that's where, that's at BA's bread and butter is the offense and the quarterback position in particular. He's not needed there. And even, you know, we got Tom Moore. We got all these guys. Clyde Christensen, Tom Moore. Clyde, yeah. Byron Leftwich. I mean, it's redundant at this point. And yeah, yeah. Arians is, ever since he's been here, I mean, he, he kind of put his system in place, but it was, you know, Byron Leftwich knew his system to start off with. So, you know, I don't even know how much of it was his system. And he just let it go. He he ever since he's been here, Bruce Arians has been a culture builder and a people person, people manager. That's all he's been. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, now he gets out there and, you know, he'll, he'll tell you, you know, he likes to call plays in the red zone. He likes to call plays in the last two minutes. You know, and he'll make suggestions. I mean, he's acknowledged all that. But, oh, and he's in charge of, you know, the, the sideline activity, the calling timeouts, uh, disputes with the referees, which in his he press conference. Those. Yeah, in his <laughs> press conference today, he was like, my biggest deal is I'm not going to know what to do on game day. He said, I can't be on the sidelines because I'll get, uh, what was it? He said, I'll get the team in trouble for cussing out the mm-hmm. referees. Um. Yeah, you know, he's built the staff for this reason, this whole time. I mean, when he came in, he brought all these people with him, put them in the coaching staff because he couldn't, he had learned from his days at Temple how much the game could really have an effect on his health. I mean, he had health problems in college when he was a college coach. So, I mean, he was a 30s maybe early 40s then at that point. Um, And then he went to Arizona. It was kind of the same thing where he had issues with his health. He had to step away. And so when he took this job, it was, uh, I think he had a different approach. And that was to um, delegate more, be less involved in the day-to-day and the, you know, the ins and outs and groom people to take over. And so I think he this has been in the works the whole time that he's been here. And he was just waiting for the right opportunity. He said, uh, I can't remember if it was in some comments or in his statement that his plan was to retire next February, but he didn't. He just felt like this was such a better time because of all the pieces that we already had in place, he didn't want to leave 
the building kind of in a mess, you know, in the event that we go 10 and 7 next season and we lose Brady and then, you know, we lose a lot of guys. He he wanted it to be the best position for Tubble to come in and take over. And I think that where we are now, it, we are in the best position. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better job as head coach. So. Yeah, Todd Bowles is being gifted a, <laughs> <laughs> a a golden platter. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. For Todd Bowles. Well, I mean, one, definitely got to win the division and definitely got to go to the playoffs. That's minimum. I mean, that's just so expected that, you know, you basically fall out of bed and do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to go deep into the playoffs and, you know, everybody's expecting the Super Bowl. I am. No doubt about it. And if you don't, if you don't do that, it's going to look like a failure this year. Uh, you know, I think there's a little bit of truth to everything in this stuff. I do think that Bruce Arians and Tom Brady, they're just so different people. You know, I mean, Bruce Arians is a drinker, a partier. Uh, I wouldn't say lazy, but he values his luxury and comfort. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? That's true. Uh, he he parties after every game. You know he he wrote about that in his book. You know the tailgate parties are legendary. You know, uh, Tom Brady is much more of a uh, you know twenty four seven thinking about it competitor. He just wants to win. He will put in sacrifice everything, and he's not, he didn't see Bruce Arians do that now. I, you know, and, and Bruce Arians did, you know, cuss him out. He admitted to that. And he, you know, Bruce Arians did call him out early in his career tenure here with the Buccaneers. But we we all knew that Bruce Arians was going to retire after a couple of years with the Buccaneers. When he was hired, I think he got a five year contract. And we all said, everybody said he's not going to coach for five years. Mm -hmm. Three, maybe. Maybe. Right. Well, this is his fourth year. This is what everybody expected. He expected it. Everybody expected this. But because of the allegations that came out, now there is a conspiracy theory and controversy behind all of it. Now, they addressed it in the press conference, and they Bruce Arians was like, this is so much crap. He, you know, he was like, y'all reporters have to write about something. So <laughs> he actually called Mike Florio out by name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And God, it was, I, I found it so interesting. When he was speaking, just the – not solemnness, but I, I guess respect. You could feel in the room mm -hmm. that when he stopped speaking, I expected applause mm -hmm. and it didn't happen. But then he did an encore. He came back real quick and he said, real quick, I just want to, you know, that's what he did the shout out to my father. And then everybody erupted into applause, which is really strange at a <laughs> football conference. Yeah, press, press conference. conference. But uh, I always like to, like to think I'm in tune with that, you know, the crowd feelings you know like when we go to the movies and stuff i i like to go to packed movies because i like the feeling of the crowd and, mm -hmm. you know i really get it's so rare that when a movie is over that the audience claps you know and when it happens it's special man it's great you know like i, I like the feeling of being in a stadium you just get that feel of there's nowhere else in the world like it mm -hmm. so anyhow do I think that the Bruce Arians and Tom Brady had some disagreements? Yes. Yes. Do I think that Tom Brady did not like the way Bruce Arians ran things? Yes. I really do. I think he was upset about the Antonio Brown stuff. I think he felt like uh, Bruce Arians did not handle that correctly. Antonio Brown is a I don't know how case. you can think that, though. I just don't know how you can no, think no, that. No, I agree with Bruce Arians on that. Yeah. You know, but I but think— why, why would you think that— Brady would think that when I mean because Tom Brady doesn't care Tom Brady's not there to make friends I know but Antonio Brown should have been off the team right when that vaccine stuff happened and the fact that it didn't I mean that was the best that uh Brady could have hoped for or AB could have hoped for that he was still on the team well it's apparent that Antonio Brown has got some serious issues character wise and it appears you have to coddle him and everybody in his life apparently has to just coddle him constantly. And, you know, like I said, Tom Brady's not there to make friends. He's there to win. 
Uh, you're not going to hear the stuff that comes out of Bruce Arians' mouth come out of Tom Brady's mouth. You know, where, you know, Bruce Arians is like, the most important thing here is the relationships you build and blah, blah, blah. No. Tom Brady will flat out tell you, no, the most important thing is for me to get another ring on my finger. <laughs> I mean, that's just how it is. Yeah. And, you know, he saw Antonio Brown. You know, he's the one that lobbied for Antonio Brown to come here against Bruce Arians' wishes. Bruce Arians emphatically came out and said, no, Antonio Brown is not coming here. Tom Brady said, yes, he is. And then guess what? Antonio Brown came. And then it turned into a disaster there towards the end. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, Bruce Arians said in a press conference that he was mad at Antonio Brown and Mike Edwards for, you know, the, the vaccine stuff. So I'm sure when they came back into the building, that Bruce Arians had a few pleasant words for them. And I'm sure he treated them kind of like, you know, they, they had to repent. You know, you got to, you know, make up for this. And Antonio Brown is just not that type of guy. And so it all blew up right there live on TV. We all saw it. And I think that Tom Brady was of the mentality of you, the coach, should have handled that better. And you hurt our team by your own personal vendetta or whatever. That's how I, that's how I think. Now, now, do I think that Tom Brady uh, orchestrated all of this? No. I think that it's just how it's worked out. I think Tom Brady would have worked with Bruce Arians this year. It would have been fine. All that good stuff. What is with your lisp today? <laughs> Bruce. It's a four hour sleep I got. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bruce. <clears throat> but Sorry. you know, I they're they're both professionals. They they you know, they want to win. And I think that they would have work together just fine like they have been. Uh, but, you know, I, I think Bruce Aaron, or Tom Brady didn't get along with Bill Belichick. You know, I, I don't think Tom Brady is, you know, like I said, he's not out there to make friends. I don't think he's friends with any of these people. I mean, I think he's a nice guy to everybody and all that good stuff, but he sees everybody else as a tool for him to get a ring. You know, and, mm. <clears throat> you know, he's he sacrifices a lot. I mean, he's got a lot. But he sacrifices a lot. I mean, he's out there, you know, eating that crap food all the damn time to keep his, you know, health up, <laughs> you know, working out constantly. You know, I mean, he's 24-7 trying to win. Okay, but here's my thing with the Antonio Brown stuff. Like how I, I don't see a world where Tom Brady blames B.A. for that after A.B., comes out publicly, he's blasting Tom Brady, he's blasting people close to Tom Brady, he's blasting everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, there was no one that was exempt from that. And I don't know. To me, after that, I don't see how you take A.B.'s side over B.A. See, I look at it as, you know, Tom Brady saw Antonio Brown as a weapon. You know, a very good weapon that he had great rapport with. And Bruce Arians kind of threw that weapon away. That's how that's how I see Tom Brady seeing it. I don't think Tom Brady gives a crap what Antonio Brown says, does, accuses, or whatever. That's all Tom Brady saw. And, you know, I'm not saying that he was like, you know, screw Bruce Arians and everything, but, you know, it was a little, you know, just a, a little bit less respect for Bruce Arians, you know, because of that. You know, you know, the way Tom Brady was seeing it is, I don't, I don't care if this guy has fake vaccine cards. I don't care if he's putting babies on spikes. I don't care if he's kicking puppies. You know, it's nothing personal. I just want him on the team so we can win. You know, he has given us the best chance to win. And if Bruce Arians is going to kick it or, you know, kind of force him off the team or, you know, not treat him the way he wants to be treated, whatever, then Tom Brady's seeing that as, oh, Bruce Arians is more worried about what Bruce Arians thinks than – winning so you know i could see where there was yeah where you know tom brady probably said something to somebody about uh bruce arians how dare bruce arians mark up his game plan sheets you know with red pins i could see where that would bother tom brady be like dude you kicked off our one of our best weapons off the team you know you were a jerk you you caused one of our best weapons to quit i don't need you marking up my sheet I can see where he would think that way. And, uh, you know, that probably got out. But no, do I think Tom Brady organized this? No. 
Do I think Tom Brady went to the Glazers and said, look, I'll come back if you give me full control of the offense and get rid of the Bruce Arians and, you know, let me make personnel decisions? No. Hmm. No, I think there's a little bit of truth to all this, but I don't think that, you know, these two guys hate each other and uh, Tom Brady maneuvered and politicked his way to get Bruce Arians to retire. No, I think I think Bruce Arians was going to retire after this year. And then when Tom Brady left, he realized, oh, crap, mm-hmm. I can't leave this team in a rebuild mode to Todd mm-hmm. Bowles. Cause that's always been the plan. We all know we, I'm sure if we went back to the first podcast we did when Bruce Arians got hired, we, we said this, we've been saying this for three years now. So I think he was like, Oh crap, I've got to help Todd Bowles build this team back. So he was going to stay for another year. And then when Tom Brady announced he was done retiring, Bruce Arians was like, Oh, thank God. <laughs> now I can drink all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was never clear who was going to take over, like whether it would be Todd Bowles or Left Byron. Or yeah. yeah. I just assumed Todd Bowles just because he had previous experience. Yeah. He's older. Right. And plus, you know, neither one of those went, got head coaching positions. And then again, you have to wonder, you know, like Byron Leftwich was number one to get the Jacksonville thing, and he pulled out of that himself. You got to wonder. You know, do these guys know that the Tampa Bay head coaching position was coming up, you know, either this year or next year, and they wanted to be in line for it? Oh. You know, Todd Bowles might have said, you know, when he went to different teams, he might have been like, yeah, you know, I appreciate y'all bringing me in, but I got my eyes on Tampa Bay over here. Hmm. I got the end there. You know, I'm number one in the slot. So. Yeah, he had a few interviews this year. He, mm-hmm. he said something interesting that, um, every time we went for an interview, you learn a lot about the organization, organization. And then when, if you don't get the job, but then you face them that year, next year, you have some insight into how everything works there. Yes. You're like, ooh, that's a good. That's good strategic thinking too. Yeah. You like yeah. That. You want to see that in your head coach. Yep. Which he's our head coach now. Todd Bowles, our head coach. Whoa. Here's the craziest thing. This this is just mind blowing to me. <clears throat> I've read at least five different articles from national outlets on, and this is what they're calling it the the Rooney Rule loophole. They're like questioning, you know, did the Buccaneers violate the Rooney Rule? You know, I mean, that's what they're, you know, and then they're like, no, because of this and that, this and that, and, you know, the time, and <clears throat> I think after March first. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do it because there's the coaching candidates are slim, whatever. But I'm like, most insane thing I've ever heard. I mean, these people are insane. Insane. Think about, again, it goes back to uh, the, the the rule of law. What is it? Mm-hmm. The, intent of the law. The intent of the law versus the rule of law. Yeah, there's, a, there's a phrase. We say it all the time right here. Uh, okay. But the wording of the law, right? you know, it, it, the, the intent of the law or the Rooney rule is to get my minority coaches in head coaching positions. That's the intent of the rule. <laughs> These people are bickering about the language. Yeah. They're insane. This is bureaucrat class. These academic. Oh, I just what, I couldn't believe what I was reading. I mean, yeah. instead of celebrating the fact, hey, here's another minority. Fourth minority. That fourth black that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have hired as a head coach. Only team. We've beaten every team out there. The other 31 teams, double. Mm-hmm. Of course, I'm going to say this about it. Tony Dungy was the only good one. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, Raheem, Morris. Raheem Morris was absolute horrible. Oh, and then Lovey. And cool. then Lovey. Raheem Morris gave me the worst season of football I've ever seen in 2011. I don't know. The... Uh... Yeah, no. Lovey Smith, Lovey Smith too, 14. Season. I yeah. mean. That gave us James Winston, first yeah. overall pick. Yeah. That's how bad that crap was. Horrible, horrible football. So, you know, minority coaching is not the answer to good football. We know that. I guess it's going to end racism. I don't know. That's that's where it's going. But there, this Rooney Rule loophole where they're saying that the Buccaneers <laughs> didn't freaking, go by. You know, like, like ignoring the fact that he's a black coach. Yes. You're like, mm. Isn't that the point? That 
it's crazy to me. But these these media people are insane. Think about we, this. We had not watched NFL Network in like years. No, I and I think that was the first video that we saw about the coaching change with NFL Network. So we go there and Tom Pelissero is on there and he's given, you know, his report and he's on there for a good while. Um, and probably about half of what he said had to do with diversity and inclusion. Diversity, like, equity and inclusion. Yeah. You got to say it right because that's the uh, the policies. I know. And yeah. it was we. I mean, it was just kind of a culture shock a little bit because we don't watch that network, so we don't see like what they talk about, what yeah. they're talking about. I mean, when we watch Pat McAfee, like it's all football. It's football, straight football. That's all. Yeah, we it's football hear. guys talking football. Football guys talking football. The culture, how the business works. You know how yeah. the players see things. Yeah, you really get some detailed stuff. stuff, and it's yeah, funny it's really too. So, you know, it's entertaining. So these networks have taken a, a real far left turn in the, since we stopped watching them. <laughs> yeah, you just get tired of being pro- preached to. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's like this anti-whiteism is just everywhere. You know, I mean, eventually, you know, that's how I feel is that, you know, everybody just is like, let's just get white people off TV. Mm-hmm. You know, let's get them out of sports. Let's get them. <laughs> so we don't want to see white people anymore. Is that what it is all about? Oh, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. All right. Let's get back to the coaching change. Yes. Uh, but going back to the media, did you notice something about this story, too? No. The local media had nothing to do with it yet again. Oh. <laughs> These guys suck. Well, who's Peter King? He's the one that broke it, right? Yeah, he's a national reporter. He is? Yeah. I, I didn't know. I hadn't heard it. I guess it should have been a Pro clue. Pro football that talk. Oh, okay. That's NBC. Pro football talk. Yeah, I, I can't remember who okay. these guys are, but yeah, he's a national guy. But yeah, he broke it. it, it, it have they broken anything? I mean, they uh, did The Antonio Brown? Vaccine yeah, right. Stuff. Anything that'll hurt the team, <laughs> they'll they'll come up with that quick. Yeah, they're fine with that. Yeah, but they, how, how do they not know this stuff? How do they not know this stuff? And here's the thing. Bruja Arians and Jason Light and the Glazers, they've known about this for weeks. Mm-hmm. You know, and Br- Bruce Arians even said in the press conference that he appreciates everybody that knew keeping it secret. So it's not like this happened. It's impressive. Yeah. It's not like this happened, you know, within an hour of him announcing it. It's been out there for a long time. And what, what do these reporters do? <laughs> what do they do? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they didn't break that Tom Brady was coming. Remember remember when Tom Brady came here and the, he was doing the – during the – the COVID stuff, he he was practicing at that school and they had helicopters mm-hmm. and all this. And they had no idea who that guy there was with Tom Brady. It was Alex Guerrero. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the Boston media just ripped him. And they were like, y'all are not prepared for what's coming if you do not yeah. know who Alex Guerrero is. We knew who he was. Yeah. And they just embarrassed themselves. But they had no idea that any of this was happening. Caught totally off guard. They're useless. Worthless. I, I'd say they're they're less than worthless. I think that they're more harmful than they are good. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Uh, there were so many national reporters at this press conference. Too. Yeah, I know. It was a lot. Yeah, and lot not too many goofy questions too. Yeah. Coach, coach, tell tell me how do you feel? Mm-hmm. Get that mm-hmm. one all the time. Yeah. Uh, but do you know what's crazy is that now Matt Rule, the head coach of the Carolina Panthers, is the longest tenured coach in the NFC South? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, wow. What? Although both Todd Bowles and Dennis Allen with the Saints have been with yeah. their team. Yeah. For, but, yeah, as the head coaches, that's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. So – Todd Bowles is going to call the defense as head coach. So I'm not really a huge fan of this. Um, but Casey Rogers and Larry Foote are going to be co-defensive coordinators. Larry Foote is the one um, who was talking about how ki- the players oh, these days right. are soft. Yeah, I like I, you. I forget who Casey Rogers is. I want to say oh Todd Bowles will be the 13th head coach of the Buccaneers. Wow. How about that? 
He got a five-year contract. Uh, and yeah, 13, that's an unlucky number. Hmm. Oh, God, don't get stolen. Let's not start thinking this way. I know. Uh, oh, he was a defensive line coach with Casey Rounders. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, so at the press conference, we, we found out a few things. One, immediately the Glazers announced that Tom Aaron or Bruce, Tom Tom Aaron. <laughs> Bruce Brady. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bruce Arians is going to be inducted into the Ring of Honor this season. Love this. Yes, which surprised Bruce Arians. He had no idea that was coming. Ah, uh, that's cool. They need someone to fill um, Don Gruden's spot. Yes. Now, they're, they're, he would have been the fourth head coach uh, inducted into the Buccaneers Ring of Honor, but now he'll be the third because, as you said, John Gruden was one of, the, one of them, and uh, he was removed because he said some nasty things about the Glazers. Mm. And in a private email, by the way. Mm -hmm. So I want to throw that out there. Uh, so in only three seasons, and here's why Arians is going in. In only three seasons, he's Arians has compiled the third most regular season wins of any Bucks coach at 31. So he's had 31 coach, 31 wins in just three years. Uh he has the franchise's best winning percentage by a long shot at .656. I know. That one's crazy. That is insane. The ne who was the next highest? Did uh, you have I would that? say it was John Gruden at .53. Yeah. It was, it was like not – it was like yeah. way, way, down, way there. down there. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Arians has five playoff wins since he's been here. The team as a whole – before Bruce Aarons in here got here, has had six playoff wins. Oh my gosh, six <laughs> in the history of the Buccaneers. And what three or four were games. in the Super Bowl era, right? right? Yeah, yeah, or the year we went to the Super Bowl. So uh, that just goes to show how much Bruce Aarons changed things here. That was a tough job. He did it. Came in and did it. I think his biggest impact was the culture. And I think that was the toughest nut to crack. We've been talking about this for years, how the Buccaneers had a culture problem. We had a culture of losing. And it's like, you know, it was perpetuated through coaching staffs and players. I mean, we lost. I mean, we had complete roster turnovers. How many coaches did we go through? Every time they come in, they turn over the roster. And you have few, very few players that – uh go from coach to coach. I mean, you had McCoy, you had Will Golston, you had Levante David, DeMar Dotson, but, uh, you know, the, just a handful. And it just seemed like, though, that culture still permeated. I don't know if it was stuck in the building, mm -hmm. like a stink, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so we always talked about that was the culture. We got to change the culture, culture change. And B.A. came and he was the first one that was able to do it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was also Tom Brady, you know, because B.A. had a year of Jameis. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. think Tom Brady coming. But, you, you know, it was Bruce Arians and Jason Light that got Tom Brady here. Yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, it was Tom Brady coming in and, mm -hmm. you know, just Tom Brady's presence. He doesn't even have to say anything. Yeah. It's just, you know. His reputation precedes him. Yeah. yeah. But I would credit B.A. with that. Yes. I mean. 100%. Because yeah. B.A. said during offseason, he was like, yeah, if I could get Tom Brady, I'd get Tom Brady right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, you know, the, I think that was his biggest accomplishment as head coach of the Buccaneers. And I think that's why he's been so successful. Um, I mean, we needed it bad. So, thank God. He came and was able to fix it. Yes. Uh, so John McKay and Tony Dungy are the two coaches in the Buccaneers ring of honor right now. So Bruce Aarons will be put up there. We don't know when yet. We don't know what game, what week it'll be, but it'll be this year. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. You know, it, who, who gets put in a ring of honor while you're still with the team? That's pretty I cool. I know. Yeah. I know. I thought it, you always had to be a former. At least retired or something. Yeah. Exactly. Speaking of retired, Malcolm Jenkins retired. I know. <laughs> don't, have to, don't have to worry about him in the NFC South anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, crazy. Cra- this has been a cr- the craziest off season ever. Here's Just for the Buccaneers, fear. let alone. I, yeah. NFL. I think it's with the NFL in general. And my theory is we're seeing so many trades mm-hmm. um, and so much going on in free agency because the draft class is so weak. Yes. And I think the next few draft classes are going to be like this. So I think the we're going to see a lot of activity in free agency for the next few years mm-hmm. going forward. Yes, because as Molly pointed out, she's got a fantastic point on this is because of COVID, you know, there is basically two years, one full year that most of these guys coming through college right now didn't play football, you know. And a lot of them, it was a year and a half, two years, where they just weren't able to play football. Yeah, and the colleges were canceling games Mm -hmm. and, you know. Yeah, and and guys were not able to play because they test positive or mm -hmm. somebody around them would test positive. You know, so the next few drafts are going to be people who are not near as prepared as they have been in the past. Mm -hmm. So I think you've got an excellent point with that. And I think that's a big reason why – Teams are, you know, doing these big free agency trades because it's like, hey, uh, you know, we ain't gonna find anybody in the draft better than this. So. But it's interesting though because the trade um, currency is still draft picks. So one side of that transaction is getting draft picks. The other side's getting a proven player. Yeah. And it's like, what you know. How's that going to shake out? I don't know. It's a, I mean, the draft picks do still have some value, obviously, yeah. or else they wouldn't be able to trade. But um, I, th- I think a lot of it might also have to do with, you know, this is a copycat league. It always has been. Mm-hmm. Uh, between us and the Rams, we are the two past championship mm-hmm. heavy free agent oh, teams. That's true. Yeah. You know, yeah. So I think people have seen the blueprint that, hey, you know, you build a solid core and then – you fill it in with buy a championship. Yeah, you buy <laughs> in your own stadium, <laughs> right? Yeah, it had to happen in fifty what fifty four years. Fifty four years, then all of a sudden, bam! Yeah, twice in a row. We did it first. Yeah, we were the first yeah. groundbreakers. History. Where's the next Super Bowl being played? Never know. Miami. Miami. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Phoenix. Really? Yeah. Or Arizona. Glendale, Arizona. Are they ever going to play on an outside stadium again? <laughs> All these damn dome stadiums. I know. Well, I think L.A. is considered outdoor because it's not completely enclosed. I know. It's so stupid. Yeah. You got a roof. If you ain't getting rained on, you're inside. If you ain't getting rained on, you're inside. Mm-hmm. It sounds mm-hmm. like if you ain't first, you last. <laughs> 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 Billy, what was his name? Billy Bob. Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby. Come on, man. My brain ain't working right today. Uh, Sue tweeted out today. He uh, he said something like, "Congratulations, Code Bowls. You're only one one proven player away from a mm-hmm. full roster, or something like that." Uh, I just butchered that one, but so Sue's still looking to come back, and apparently they are. I forget. Somebody said that they were working on him. Oh, yeah. He's going to come back definitely now. Yeah. Uh, the defense, all the defensive players love Todd Bowles. Yeah. Love Todd Bowles. Every time they talk, they talk about how great of a coach he is, mm-hmm. how great of a person he is. I thought it was interesting. B.A. pointed out, like, you know, I didn't, he didn't want Todd Bowles to have to go into a crappy head coaching position. You know, he's, like, stacked now. You know, this is one oh, of the yeah. best circumstances he could have come into. But just yeah, well, y- talking about that. You know, when he went to the Jets, that yeah, was a crap God. team. Yeah. And he they was didn't there help a him long time. Four years. Yeah. yeah. And he uh he didn't get any help from general management or ownership. It was absolutely it was atrocious. Oh, it felt so bad for him. <laughs> he know. just he got thrown in the fire there, man. Yeah. Uh is that when they had Mark Sanchez? Or was that after? After. After. Okay. Yeah. After the butt fumble. Yes. <laughs> ruined his career. <laughs> Post butt fumble. Yeah. I'll never forget watching that live, going 
Did I just see what I think I saw? <laughs> Did he just run into the back of his own player and fumble the ball? Uh, you know, I will say this for Bucks fans. Silver lining. This is the first time we've had a coaching change where it wasn't just a complete explosion, implosion, whatever. Yeah. I mean, normally the coaching change is uh, we go 7-9 we have to experience Black Monday, waking up, you haven't made the playoffs, the season's over, and your coach gets fired, and then it's the head coaching search, and then it's the roster turnover, and the uncertainty, and then, yes, you know, yeah. all of that. So, yeah, they, you couldn't ask for a better transition here. Exactly. Just all for the fans, for the exactly. team, for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Bowls <laughs> Bulls' quarterbacks, <clears throat> his, his tenure there was Ryan Fitzpatrick, oh. Josh McCown, mm-hmm. and Sam Darnold. So we've had two of those three quarterbacks at the yes. Buccaneers. Yes. Sam Darnold. Yes. Really? Apparently he drafted Darnold. How long has Darnold been in the league? 2018. Todd Bowles was there in 2018? Mm-hmm. Wow, I just feel like we've had him forever. I thought he had some, like, gap years. So he was fired in 2018 with the Jets, and then we brought him in in 2019 immediately. Yes. yes. Interesting. I did not know that. Wow. It's hard to keep all this stuff in line. Yes. Yeah. And having watched the sport for 13 years, I'm like, I can't keep track yep. of timelines. There's so much <laughs> stuff that goes on. We were watching the in the current last night, and they're recapping games. I think they got through week three mm-hmm. or four. Week in first three, season. Week where three. we had the Rams, right? Yeah. And I'm sitting there. I'm going like, oh, yeah, this is when those are. And Molly was like, I have no, I don't remember this game at all. I don't remember anything about it. Like, if you held a gun to my head and said, who did we play in week two, I would, you would yeah, have killed me. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, it's hard to remember. It's hard to remember from week to week. Yeah. Well, you, you figure you've been watching it for 13 years, right? Yeah. Uh, that's 16 games a year. Mm-hmm. 17, actually, because you watch, you know, the bye week. That's, yeah. that's, those are just Buccaneer games. You usually yeah. watch four or five other games during the week. And the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you're looking at like a thousand games mm-hmm. that you've watched. Yeah. <laughs> no way. And forgotten. And forgotten. <laughs> I don't yeah. remember any of them. Yeah. And it's strange how, like, I'll have memories of games and then I'll go back and watch them and be like, yeah, that's not anything like I remember. It. Wow. Do that a lot with memories. Yeah. Everybody, everybody does. They just. Generally, don't go back and check on them. Like, I try to do a lot. I'll be like, is that how I remember that? Let me see. Nope, <laughs> not how that? I remember it. It yeah. never is, ever. Mm-hmm. Our memories are tricky, tricky things. Yep. Unreliable. Very. Never trust your memory. And it's horrible that that's like the number one thing used in court of law to convict people. Mm-hmm. Eyewitness testimony. Horrible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Although forensic evidence ain't much better. None of it is. Yeah. Okay, Ralph, are we ready to wrap it up? You guys, I think we are. Uh, let's see. We covered Ryan Griffin has been re-signed. The Todd Bowles is now our new head coach, and Bruce Arians has moved to the front office. What a crazy like twenty-four hours. Yeah, it's just, and it just came out of nowhere. I know I. It, no idea was coming. No. No, I had no clue. Yeah. Never dawned on me. But then when I thought about it, I was like, oh, yeah, this is his fourth year. We said he was only going to do it for three. Yeah. You know, when you when you start really thinking about it, and humans are weird. We're just weird. You know, they're weird. But yet we expect them to act in predictable ways. None of us mm-hmm. do it. And we're all unpredictable. We all do weird stuff, emotionally driven motives, all kinds of stuff. You know, and then when I sat down and thought about it, I was like, yeah, okay. I think I can live with this. Yeah. And it was like a kick in the nuts, man. Yeah, it was kind of depressing. I was like, are you serious? Talk Why about a roller coaster ride in the season. No. It hasn't even started yet. We haven't even had camp yet. <laughs> and we got the camp. Yeah, we got the camp. And we've had a Ooh. thousand foot drop roller coaster ride I so know, far. It's just been nuts. They said, um, 
before they announced that they wanted to get a rule clarified, which they did at the owner's meeting. Yeah, it was the Rudy rule. The, yeah. 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 So. And that's when they found out that right. <clears throat> this late in the season, the Rudy rule doesn't apply because yeah. the coaching stuff is so slim. Yeah. And B.A. had missed a media appearance or, or he had like left early from the owner's mm-hmm. meeting. Yeah. But they said it was a stomach bug. Right. It was not related to all this. You need to go out in the parking lot and get a drink on. I was just thinking it might have been too much crown. Was a stomach <laughs> bug. <laughs> uh, Bruce Harris did emphatically say that it was not, it had nothing to do with his health, his yeah. retirement. And Thankfully. he did emphatically say that there was no rift between him and Brady. Uh, you know, Brady did come out with a statement almost immediately after Bruce Arians announced his retirement. So you knew right then that. Yeah, he yeah, knew. That Brady knew. It was a glowing statement and there were glowing lots statement. of heart emojis. So I need y'all <laughs> to like shut up about all this. There's no yeah. rift. Well, you know, speculation's fun. It's, you know. No, it's not in this respect, sir. You leave our team alone. You, you leave them alone. Keep our team out of your mouth. <laughs> That's right. I will smack you on stage. <laughs> Oh, man. What is going on with this world? Clown world. Everything's crazy. Yep. I don't know. We just need... We got too much pent-up energy from being in our houses for two years. So it makes everybody crazy, I think. Is that what it was? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, maybe we need a war. Start Something. throwing missiles at each other. I don't know. Something. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Anyway. Let's wrap this up. Oh, uh, yeah, we covered everything. Yay. Yay. And we did it. All right, guys. Don't be too despondent. Nothing's really changing. It's just, uh, you know, Bruce Aarons isn't going to be giving his press conferences every week, which I'm going to miss. I love <laughs> I his press conferences. I know. Probably the best. I've enjoyed his press conferences more than any coach we've ever had. I, I don't, Shiano was probably the most informative. Although B.A. was very informative with this stuff. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Arians was definitely more entertaining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that is why I feel like there was no rift. Because B.A. would have said Unless it's only like one-sided. Like very one-sided. Brady only. Right. Yeah. It could be. You, you know. know. And like, like I said, I don't think it's Brady's all like harumphing around about it. I mean, I'm sure if you were to ask him, he'd probably go... Yeah, yeah, Bruce Arians could probably work a little bit harder. You know, show up a little bit earlier, stay a little yeah. bit late. You know, they, but Bruce Arians doesn't do that. You know, he comes mm-hmm. in late. He leaves early. That's not his thing. Yeah. And they were saying, like, with B.A.'s Achilles rehab, like, he would not be there, like, all morning. He'd be rehabbing the Achilles and then show up and... He's rehabbing that Crown Royal bottle. <laughs> That's what he's rehabbing, which I don't have a problem with. I have no problem whatsoever with B.A.'s lackadaisical style you know, because it works. Either. Yeah, you got to do what works for you. Exactly. And for the, and I think that area too. I mean, you're in Florida. You're yeah, in Party City. A beautiful area. Yeah, yeah. Um, think about that. Tom Brady goes from Boston, where it's miserable, cold, wet, sports yeah. fanatics, because that's all they got to do. Yeah. You know, heavy into politics, and you know they're, they're near New York and all that good stuff. So you know they're very. Uh, Elitist. There's yes. The elitist, there you I go. Think. Good word. And he comes to the table where it's like party every day. You yeah. Know? Everyone's but, on vacation. I mean, it's like a vacation spot. Nobody owns a jacket and we all have yeah. you know, cup holders we all welded boats. to our arms. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'll hold our beer bottle. Yeah. You know, and you see, you see all the parades they gave in Boston after the Super Bowl win, you know, it's like, blah, 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 you know, they get back to work. Mm-hmm. We have a parade, the boat parade for one, which is cool as shit. And uh, Tom Brady's throwing the damn trophy around like it's <laughs> you know, a, a wet rag. And then he gets so drunk, they had to carry him out. <laughs> Ryan Griffin, that's why that we re-signed funny, him. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's Tom Brady's designated driver. Mm-hmm. You know, so, yeah, it's a huge culture difference. Yeah. You know, in, in the state, in the people, mm-hmm. everything. And it fits Tom or Bruce Arians a lot more. You know, this, it's he's a perfect fit for the Buccaneers. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 
So I, I hope he stays in the front office forever. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be cool as shit. Mm. Yeah. That's a good idea. And I hope Tom Bowl, Todd Bowles has great success. Yeah. Although I will say this, I was not impressed with him head coaching at the Jets. You know, granted, not he didn't a have great a lot situation. Of right. But his player evaluations didn't seem to be all that good. And, uh, you know, it, it, Going from the defense, they just didn't. It yeah. didn't seem like he could really get a grasp on what he wanted to do on offense. Now here he's not going to have that problem. He's not going to have anything to do with offense. I can tell mm-hmm. you that right now. You know, I mean, he might do a tweak here and there, mm-hmm. make some suggestions. Yeah, but he's not going to be. They got they got way too many Chiefs over there. Yeah, well, it's a tough jump from coordinator to head coach because head coach is a very different position. Yeah. And I hope that B.A. has spent the time that he, Tubbles has been here kind of mentoring him about the difference and how to take over, you know, made the transition very easy for him, which I think he probably did. Very much so. And, t- and Bruce is going to be there the whole time with yeah. everything he needs. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, these guys have all worked together for 30, 40 years. Mm-hmm. You know, they're family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is. yeah, Todd Bowles and BA were together at Temple. And there mm-hmm. are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Todd and, Bowles uh, coached. Yeah. I mean, uh, Bruce Arians to- coached Todd Bowles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He actually told a story at the press conference, said that uh, it's a story Todd Bowles likes to tell that Bruce Arians told Todd Bowles that he wasn't good enough to go in the NFL and he should think about coaching. And so uh-huh. Todd Bowles went into the NFL and played for 10 years and won two Super Bowls. <laughs> 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 he was That'll like, teach you. Yeah, he was like, that showed me I didn't know anything about player evaluation. That's what he said. <laughs> All right, guys, let's All wrap right. this up. Uh, All right. If you're out there and you're kind of sad about Bruce Arians, don't look at it that way. The, really, the only sad thing is we're just not going to see him in the press conferences anymore. We're on the sideline. I love the games where he's cussing out the refs. Yeah, we're not. I like gonna, to see how purple he gets. Yep, yep. Yep. We had a little color chart we kept next to the TV. Yep, and, yep. Uh, yeah, Todd Bowles doesn't do that. No. He's not a – he's more of a ton, Tony Dungy stoic. Well, type. we got Tom Brady who will be chewing somebody out. So. Yeah, yeah, let Tom Brady do all that. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, so, you know, if you if you feel a little down about it, don't really be. It's it's not going to affect the team that much. If, if anything, this might be much better for the team. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're still going to win the Super Bowl. So, yeah. Just might not be as entertaining in press conferences. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Sacrifice we can make, guys. Yeah. We got and, and this is really setting us up for a long run. Because, you know, we, yeah. we've been talking about this all offseason, mm-hmm. about how, you know, once these veterans are done, you know, these one-year contracts are done, we're going to be in some serious problems. Mm-hmm. If Todd Bowles is the head coach and he stays here, we could win and he could start recruiting people. Mm-hmm. It could be a great, easy transition for a very long tenure of – a dynasty. Yeah. Well, and I wonder, just one more quick thing before we wrap up. Like, did B.A. hang on for so long because we were trying to get these key guys back? And, you know, Fournette, uh, you know, point. some other guys yeah. who might have been a little bit spooked to think, oh, hey, we got a new. The guys on the offense. Situ- yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Like Ryan Jensen. Yeah, Ryan um, Jensen brought uh, Shaq in, brought uh, yeah. Russell Gage in. Brought Leonard Fournette back. Yeah, because they focused on that side first. Yeah. So. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Let's for real wrap Let's this wrap up. Let's wrap it up this time. time. <laughs> All right, guys. That's it for us. Till next time. Go Bucks.